Good day everyone. We all have seen cyclones, whether in the grinding systems or in the kiln preheater tower. However, there seems to be some misunderstanding about how they work and how to make sure they perform correctly. Let us go through some good practices focusing on the preheater tower cyclones. There is one inlet to the cyclone, the hot gases carrying material from the lower stages of the preheater, and two outlets, one for material discharge at the bottom of the cyclone and one for the clean gases at the top. The only moving part in the cyclone system is this pendulum valve at the material discharge end. This valve plays a key role in ensuring a proper collecting efficiency of the cyclone. Other factors also affect the efficiency, such as the material particle size and density, the speed of rotation in the cyclone vortex, in other words, smaller cyclone diameters means higher speed, thus better separation, the cyclone length, that is, the long cyclone increases time for separation and finally the geometry of the internal cyclone fitting, the so-called immersion tube or deep tube. We will go into details later on. The cyclone length and diameter explains why we have longer and thinner cyclones on the top stage of the preheater where we need high efficiency to retain up to 95% of the material in the preheater. At the bottom of the preheater, cyclones are much larger. They need to handle huge volumes of hot gases, but they are only 75% efficient. The range of efficiencies is shown. One may ask the questions, why can't we use only the most efficient types of cyclones? Simple answer. Because the efficient cyclones also produce the largest pressure drop across them, the so-called delta pressure. Here is an example of what happens in a typical preheater tower. We need around 5 millibars draft at kiln inlet. Then the pressure drops are shown for each stage and the accumulated required suction is indicated on the dial. The gases will cool down as they go up the preheater, needing slimmer cyclones, explaining the increased pressure drop. If we were to have high efficiency cyclones on all stages of the preheater tower, we would require an extremely large induced draft fan in turn consuming too much electrical energy, the compromise is found with only the top stage being the most efficient. Let us have a look how a cyclone works. The gas and material inlet is tangent to the cyclone cylindrical part. This forces the gases into a fast rotation, turning into a vortex in the conical section. Look at the immersion tube, also called deep tube. This element is crucial to the cyclone efficiency and should be checked at every major kiln stop in all cyclones. The longer the immersion tube, the more efficient the cyclone is and the higher the pressure loss. In case there are signs of heavy wear or if the deep tube looks tilted, then it should be replaced. In case a deep tube falls down, it will get stuck in the cyclone and most probably provoke a blockage. The only option will be to cut open the cyclone to remove the tube, with the hazards of having tons of hot meal trapped overhead. Nowadays, the tubes are often built with segmented ceramic plates or high-resistance steel alloys for easy repairs. And in case they collapse, to avoid their blocking the material discharge. During operation, most of the material will go down the cone. Notice the pendulum valve working. The cutaway should be adjusted 
when the system is stopped. The bearings must be free, allowing to move the level by hand without effort and it should close back when released. The weight of material in the discharge duct will push its way through the valve but gases will not be able to come back through the discharge duct. The valve plate must be checked and replaced when needed. To finish, a word on the preheating phase of the kiln system. The hot gases come up from the lower stages, grow around the cyclone, and up to the next stages. Trouble is that the cone part and material duct are not heated during this time. During preheating, all the valves should be tied open to heat up the complete system. Just before feeding the kiln, these valves must be released and checked to ensure they can move freely. Thank you for your attention and feel free to comment or contact me.